Podcast. My name is Dean Butcher and I'm excited because today I get to sit down with this very special guest that I've known for many years now and he is an instrumental figure in the music industry. He's a pioneer in smooth jazz and he's a legendary artist. Put your hands together as we welcome David Sanborn. <laughs> Mr. Sanborn. Wow. <laughs> and they love you. And I love them. How are you? I'm okay. Yeah? I'm good. Yeah. Hanging out? Yeah, this is great. You love the cruise. Well, what can be better? Yeah. I mean, you play for these great audiences and you, you know, just the ocean and the sun and the beautiful weather. I mean, what's wrong with that? Do you get out much? Do you go ashore much? I don't ever go ashore. I stay on the ship. The ship's so great. Why get off? Right? That's true. You know, I That's go up true. on the deck. There's so much to do here. You know, it's great. But now, when you, how long ago was it that you first started sailing with us? Um, like oh, seven years or seven? ago. Yeah. Seven years ago. Eight seven years, years ago. ago. Yeah. So because at first it kind of took you a minute to really commit, right? You were a little well, apprehensive. Well, I I had you know just issues about. I thought I was going to get claustrophobic, and I'm trapped on the ship. Right, right. right. I'm thinking, oh my god. But then I was on here, and it's like, you know, this five-star hotel. And, you know, the people are great. You know, the fans are great. And, uh, you know, the music is great. And you get, we get to hang out, all the musicians. You know, and it, all of us, we all know each other, but we rarely get a chance to spend any real quality time with each other because we're always, pardon the pun, but like ships passing in the night, Yeah, you know, and uh, I don't know if that's a pun or not, but it's <laughs> something. Well, it's interesting. Uh, Kirk Whalen once said that he feels so much, not I won't say pressure, but he feels like he plays better and works harder on the cruises because unlike a festival where you guys are, ships passing the night, you go in and someone else leaves, and so you guys never really sit there and watch each other. Now, while you're playing, You've got, you know, Marcus Miller in the audience watching you. You've got, you know, Bernie James. You've got all your peers watching you. Do you find that, that there is pressure to really beat your A game? Well, I think it just raises the bar. And I don't know if it's uh, so much pressure as it is just, you know, you're kind of inspired because you hear other people play and, you know, there's a natural, healthy... It's not really competition. Right. Because, you know, everybody's got their individual voice and, and you know, we all have different ways of expressing ourselves musically. But I think, you know, standing next to, like, last night, for example, next to uh, Grace Kelly and Eric Marienthal, you know, Eric will play something, I'll go, oh, wow, that's an interesting way that he got through that right. situation and let me try that. And so we kind of, like, you know, you know goad each other on and it's, uh, I think in that sense, it's, it's really, you know, it, it kind of raises your, your performance level. You know? Well, let me ask, because <clears throat> Alonzo Bowden, he loves to, as a comedian, loves to sit at the back with other comedians and watch up-and-coming comedians and up-and-coming stars, and he loves it when they bomb. He finds that so funny as a comedian when they bomb and they're like, you know, they... And well, it's, a, it's the, the comedian thing. But that's not the same thing in the musician world, right? You want to like you don't want to watch a musician or hear a musician hit a bad note. You want them to succeed, correct? Or do you find it? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I wanted. This I wanted some juice. No, I, I think it's uh, well. I think the thing is, is that you know when you hear somebody like have problems, you know, musical, sound, why otherwise, we kind of empathize as musicians, because we've all been there. Right. You know, we've, and, and, you know, I mean, I don't know what the dynamic is with, with uh, comedians, but, I mean, every comedian, every performer that I know has bombed. At some point, At one yeah. point or another. I mean, you know, it's just, it's inevitable. I mean, especially, you know, the longer you do it, you're bound to hit just one of those moments where you're off, you're not connecting with the audience, something's not right. Right. And it's just like crickets. And what do you do in those you know, circumstances? You just get through it, you know. You try to. Rem I, I try to remember why I started doing what I do in the first place, and you know, I mean, not to get too melodramatic about it, but music really saved my life. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah. on almost every level, you know, physically, emotionally, uh, 
Because uh, you just, had polio as a kid, right? Yeah, I had polio as a kid, and so I was, you know, kind of, you know, I was in an iron lung for a year. I was paralyzed from the neck down for another year from three to five. Amazing. So I had a, you know, challenging childhood in that way. And, you know, I took up the saxophone when I was 11 as therapy mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, strengthen my lungs. And it became my life's work. Uh, but Back you know, then, I, let me I've, ask you, was it, was it work? In other words, no. So you fell in love with it from the get-go. It wasn't like just therapy. It was like there was that reason behind it, but you also fell in love with the instrument and it was enjoyable. Well, long before I started playing. I mean, music was always a kind of a, a place I could go. Got it. You know, because I spent a lot of time in bed as a kid, you know, listening to the radio late at night with all the lights off. And, uh, you know, uh, music was, you know, I would hear these great radio stations from, I, I grew up in St. Louis. So these great radio stations from Texas, from Chicago, from Memphis, and all this different kind of music, blues, jazz, rhythm and blues, gospel music, mm -hmm. uh, early rock and roll. Uh, and um, it was just this, it was like this other world that I wanted to be a part of. And I didn't really think much beyond whatever is, this is, I want to be a part of it. Right, right. Whether I'm a player, whether I'm a whatever I am, I just need to be around it, you know. Did you think that back then, did you think, hey, I'm going to, did you ever think you'd have the career that, that you have? Yeah, Dane, I did. I knew no. I was. <laughs> In other words. Kidding? Was that. Are you kidding? This is all, this is unbelievable to me. Everything that happened is unbelievable to me. I mean, I, you know. I, you just wanted to I'm, get to the next day. I just, I just wanted to play. That was it. Whether there was no, whether it was nobody out there, or five thousand people, ten thousand people, whatever, it didn't really matter. I just right. wanted to play. You know? So you brought up something before. You're from St. Louis. Yeah. So then, why Chicago song and not St. Louis song? You'll have to ask Marcus. Well, okay. You want, you want the story behind? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Okay. We, um, Marcus, Marcus and I were. Uh, working on, the, on an album, I don't remember the name of it, the, the album that Chicago Song was on. And, uh, and uh, we were kind of, you know, doing, you know, breaking it down and kind of, you know, test running it in, on the road. And we were playing at a club in Chicago called Park West. And there were a, a, a bunch of guys in the audience that, from the Chicago Bears, uh -huh. you know, and... Uh, Is that your team? Huh? Is that your team? Well, yeah. Then I mean, they were a very colorful team, like the Oakland Raiders. I mean, you know, t teams with a lot of personality. And at that time, the, you know, McMahon was there, and a lot of people. Uh, Dick Butkus was the you know coach, and it was a, a colorful team. Uh, but anyway, we were, you know, I announced this song. I said, hey, you know, Marcus just wrote this song, and we're, you know, we don't really have a title for it. And one of the Chicago Bears was in the audience. He yelled out. Call it Chicago song. <laughs> so we went. Yes, sir. There we go. So that, that was how that got named. I'm going to tell you what's happening today because we do arrive in Cozumel at 11 o'clock and we do set sail at 11 p.m. Arrival in the morning, obviously. Uh, this morning we do have our Entertainment Cruise Productions office open at 9.30. Now, if you're interested, and you should be, because when people like uh, Bernie James and Brian Colbertson come up and say, can I just come on the Contemporary Jazz Cruise next year? Because the lineup is phenomenal. you got Pat Metheny and Diane Reeves and Layla Hathaway. This is the reason to book, because also David Sanborn has just been announced as the night music host. Yes. So walk us through, well, we'll talk about night music, we'll talk about the late show, but talk, walk us through what we can expect on the cruise, because... You're working uh, with us right now as we program the cruise, yeah. but you're theming the nights, and you're, you're basically like, you're going to jam and, and host every evening big jam sessions with, with all of the people I mentioned. Yeah, exactly. Some of the people that uh, they are going to be on the cruise. Right. Um, basically, we're going to have, uh, I think, four nights mm -hmm. where we, um, there's, there's a band, I'll have a band, which is... Uh, uh, Billy Jeffrey Kilson on yep. Billy Kilson on drums, Jeffrey Keyser on keyboards, and a guy named Ben Williams on bass. I mean, and, that's no uh, lightweight band. No, no. I mean, these, this is the real deal. Real, yeah, world class players, and uh, um, 
Uh, Jeff Keezer has been playing with uh, Chris Bode for a long time. Mm -hmm. He's done a lot of other things as well, as well as Billy Kilson. He played with Dave Holland, a great bass player, as well as uh, Chris Bode. And Ben mm -hmm. Williams is a young, rising uh, phenomenon on the bass, a uh -huh. great, great young player. So we'll have, uh, I think, Robert Glasper's on the ship, as you mentioned. Correct. Thene, yep. um, some, some of the other people. Are, uh, Diane Josh, Reeves, who you Diane played Reeves, with recently. Josh Redman, yep. Um, and so we're going to have four nights that are going to be kind of thematic nights. One night is going to be, we're, we're still, this is all a work in progress. So yeah. One night will be, say, let's say, a New Orleans night, uh, which will, you know, loosely be based around music from New Orleans, you know, past, present. Uh -huh. um, one night may be, you know, a blues night where we talk about all the different uh, aspects of the blues, mm -hmm. you know, and what, what it means different, to, different things to different people. Uh, we may have a like where jazz is headed night. Uh, you know, this is all we're. But it's unique because you're going to invite people like Layla Hathaway, and you're going to invite Diane Reeves in, yeah. Gregory Porter, and this. Yeah, Gregory Porter. I, I mean, yeah. let's be honest. This doesn't happen anywhere to have an all-star band like that, where each night you get a different themed show, which is a massive jam session hosted by David Sanborn with these special guests. It's pretty unique. Have you put something like this together before? Well. I, other, I, you know, other than night music, really. I, well, yeah, I, I used to host a, a right. TV show called Night Music. And the concept on that, well, thank you. Is it 66 something episodes? What's that? You did 66 or something episodes? Um, well, we did it for two years, however many episodes that was. Um, and uh, it, it, was, it was kind of, uh, the, the idea that I had was to have musicians from different genres of music, uh, from the jazz area, from the uh, pop area, from the rhythm and blues area, from the rock and roll era, from the, you know, all different right. folk music, whatever, um, and have them do songs individually with a house band, which was Marcus Miller, right. uh, a drummer named Omar Hakim, some really great musicians. Uh, That's a pretty cool house band. Yeah, very good house <laughs> band. And, and they would do a, a song of their own, and then at the end of the night, we would have all the musicians come on and collaborate on one song that right. was to, to be determined by all the musicians, you know. And the, the idea behind that was to show how these barriers between the different styles of music are in a lot of ways very artificial. Uh -huh. That musicians listen to other musicians no matter what their category is. Right, right, right. So, let, for example, you know, maybe uh, Pat Metheny will listen to... Uh, um, you know, Todd Rundgren, or um, I don't know if you know any of these names. Todd Rundgren is a very fine uh, 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 pop singer and songwriter. And uh, uh, if that's for me, tell him I'll be right there. So it's like going to cost it's you It's my 50 wife. Yeah. And it just cost you $52. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and so then we, we had Leonard Cohen. We had Sonny Rollins wow. on one show. Uh, and then at the end of the night, we, you know, they would do a song together. And things that on paper you think, well, this is never going to work, were, uh, went amazingly well. And it kind of, I think, represented to people the idea that, you know, there could be these great kumbaya moments of, right. uh, you know, kind of all coming together. And I, I think it was, uh, I think it struck a nerve. I mean, it was almost every musician I've run into over the years since the, the show ended have said to me, you know, that, that show was very important to me coming up because I, you know, I saw amazing. this and I th saw all the possibilities, things that were possible in music. You know? So, you, I mean, it must be like a bit of a Twilight Zone to then put that together again after decades of it not being on and now you're re sort of recreating it back on the ship. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's pretty we, cool. We did, we did something a little bit like that a few years ago on the ship. Yeah, we did I, night music on the ship and it yeah. worked great. But now to do it in, you know, with different musical genres and with getting the artists in like night yeah. after night, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. And obviously... We, we have to get a film crew on to, to really oh, re to yeah. capture it, I think. There you go. I think, for sure. You said it. We could have uh, night mu a whole resurgence of night music. That's right. Featuring Dane Butcher. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, but I do want to ask you, you've, you've got a, a new album out. <laughs> it's called uh, Wow. I need you guys to just follow me around yeah. wherever I go. This is Be David Shadow. I mean, my God. 
But it's we did the listening party last year, and when you walked us through the songs, mm. it it re- I I love it. I, I really, really, Thank genuinely, you. and truly love it, man. It's Thank it's it takes you on a whole different journey. Well, you know, albums to me were always, uh, you know, they they were like novels. You know, you had a, a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. And I always thought that you know the great thing about the album format was that you could tell a story over right. a long period of time. There was this dramatic arc, you know, and um, you know, I, I still, even though that concept, the, 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 al- the concept of albums is no longer as viable as it once was right. because, you know, people can just pick digital. Songs off. Yep. Yeah, and I, you know, I understand that there's nothing wrong with that. But I still, even though I know that's the reality today where people will just choose one or two songs that they happen to like, I still spend a lot of time thinking about sequencing, how, thing, how one thing leads to another, and spacing between the songs. Um, because the order so of the songs important is important. Even if, you know, even if nobody hears it that way. Right. You know, it's like I always think of those, uh, these Buddhists, Buddhist monks would make these... Uh, like what they call sand paintings, where yep. they would like sprinkle sand and make these very intricate mandalas on, on, the, on the floor of the temples. And then uh, when they were all done, they would open the doors and just let the wind blow it away. You know, wow, because it was amazing. just like, and it just kind of was supposed to represent the transience of, you know, beauty.